Welcome back to the Earth Science Classroom. This video is on glacial mass balance, talking about glaciers or glaciers, and looking at how the glacier forms, how it flows, and the different components of the glacier in general from the start to its end or terminus. So let's check out these terms and look at glacial mass balance. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So with glaciers, or in particular alpine or valley glaciers or glaciers, you have this origin in high elevation mountainous regions, whether it's a mountain range, and it's going to have this glacier flow down the side of the mountain from high elevation to a lower elevation. It could also form a Piedmont glacier or glacier lower down in the slopes of the mountains. But you have this general schematic where you have this mountain bedrock, the angle, the gradient, the steepness of slope, and you have this two sections of the glacier or glacier shown here in the diagram. And you have the flow through the arrows, the flow of ice, the direction of movement through gravity, through deformation, through plastic deformation. And you have this general two sections of the glacier, the top section up here, uh, between the dash line and the top of the mountain, which is the head or the origin of where the glacier derives from or is formed, is called the zone of accumulation. This is where you have the precip, the snow, based on the climate and the elevation, the amount of snow that's going to fall from the atmosphere and accumulate at this section of the glacier or glacier. And you have the build-up and accumulation of snow, which turns to granular snow and then turns into glacial ice after a couple of years of accumulation and compression, pressure and an increase in density and smaller volume. And then you have the flow going down the mountainside and then this dashed line represents the balance between the accumulation of the glacier and the ablation, the decrease in ice, the decrease in the mass of the glacier as it flows downhill towards the end, which is called the terminus. Now, the terminus could be on land or could be in a body of water like a lake or an ocean, but the terminus is where the glacier is going to end. Now, this dashed line is called the line of equilibrium or equilibrium line, which means there's a balance between accumulation and the loss or ablation of that glacier. Then below that dashed line, you have the zone of ablation, which is a fancy word for loss, where the glacier is going to decrease in mass through various processes. Now, either it can end up at the terminus where the glacier is going, the ice is going to break off, carve in, and form icebergs on various sized bergs, or it could also uh, decrease through evaporation or melting. Now, from snow, directly to gas and that phase change is called sublimation which is a special kind of phase change which in incorporates a lot of energy in a short period of time which forces the solid glacial ice or snow to transfer and phase change directly into a gas and kind of bypass that liquid phase that liquid state of matter and go straight from solid to gas so the zone of ablation is where the glaciers go into decrease in mass break down erode and weather basically and either it can retreat up the mountainside or in an area of or a time of, of an ice age let's say 20,000 years ago the glacier is going to advance and get larger but they're still going to have some level or amount of ablation with that glacier or glacier so you have these two sections accumulation ablation and the, the line or the area that separates these two is called the equilibrium line. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you'd like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.